Hi there again. My wife and I recently watched a documentary. It was about a Silicon Valley tech company that took off a few years ago. And in their heyday, they were estimated to be worth about $9 billion. Now, this was a company that claimed that they had figured out a way, an easy and quick way, to analyze blood samples, and it was supposed to disrupt the industry. But unfortunately, and eventually that company was found out to be a hoax, and the product that they claimed to be making, it wasn't working at all. I'm not sure if the founder was simply a liar or just delusional in her thinking that she could eventually make this product work. But it's one of those sad stories that make you realize that we live in a world of fraud, of lying, of cheating, and trying to get ahead no matter the cost. Thankfully, when it comes to the scriptures, we don't have to worry that it was all made up or that it was a lie. If you read the Wells Meditation from yesterday, the author there reminded us that what we actually have in scriptures is the eyewitness testimony of people who saw Jesus both before and after he died. And these followers, well, they were willing to put their lives on the line. And in fact, most of them did die as a result of continuing to tell the story of Jesus and his miraculous resurrection from the dead. Now, if this story wasn't true, why on earth would they keep telling it? Knowing if they would just simply stop, they would have saved themselves a whole lot of pain and hassle, and they would have saved their own lives. But the story wasn't just a myth, and they had to keep on telling it. This is similar to what Charles Colson who was the special counsel to President Nixon, what he said later on about the Watergate scandal and, and his own midlife conversion to Christianity. Colson wrote, I know the resurrection is a fact. In Watergate, it proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Everyone was beaten tortured, stoned, and put in prison. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep alive for three weeks. You're telling me 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. Now, what a blessing it is to know that the Bible and the truths that we hold so dear aren't a lie. It is not a scam. It's not someone else to get our hard-earned money, but the truths we find in Scripture are given for our eternal benefit. And they're given to us completely free, completely earned by Christ's perfect life, death, and resurrection. And with that comfort, we can say with Peter, as he wrote in 2 Peter 1, beginning with the 16th verse, For we did not follow cleverly devised tales that were made known to you, the power of and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic word made more certain, to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. But know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. And my dear friends, these truths that we hold on to, it changes everything. And don't let the devil convince you otherwise. These words are life, and these words give life to others too. So continue to be Jesus eyewitnesses in this world, and just sit back and watch as the Holy Spirit works in people's hearts to change their eternal futures too. And so we pray. Dearest Lord, we thank you for the source of all truth, that you have handed down to us through your word. Help us to always hold your word before our eyes and do not allow us to grow cold to your promises of future glory. 
Be with us as we share these truths with others and send your Holy Spirit to enlighten their hearts and minds to see your love and mercy. We pray these things with the full confidence of your trustworthiness and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, my friends, and I will see you again soon.